Hi, I'm Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, we're going to be working with the Tai Chi Jian. Now with the Tai Chi Jian, we're going to be focusing on a very particular technique. This is going to be a forward thrust where the blade ends in a vertical position. Notice we have one edge up, one edge down. We're not going to have the blade flat with the palm up, we're not going to have the blade flat with the palm down, and we're not going to do an inverted position with our palm pointing outwards. Each of these is going to end with the blade vertical and the palm pointing inwards. Now with that said, we're going to explore this thrusting technique with a bunch of different types of footwork. We're going to have a bow stance forward with the opposite foot. We're going to have a bow stance forward with the same side foot. We'll do a twisting stance. We'll do raising the legs up. So we'll have different ways of being able to use this thrusting technique. Now it's simple in, in that sense, but it is going to start getting complicated once we start mixing the footwork and putting everything together. So really the couple things that you want to keep in mind are end in a vertical thrust position, start typically at the right hip or the right shoulder. We'll have one that's going to be in a little bit of a different position and always keep your sword, your other hand in a sword finger position. Notice I keep my fingers together. I don't have swords fingers. I have one <laughs> sword finger, and then my thumb touches my ring finger. If it doesn't touch your ring finger, it's not sword finger. And if you're sticking out a peace sign, it's not sword finger any either. So make sure this remains in this position and we'll go in a neutral position in between each poke resting on the wrist. Now, once you get the hang of this, you can apply raising the hand up, out, pointing in different guard positions. But the main thing we want to focus on here is using the Jian for the thrust and using different types of footwork for it. So grab your Jian and let's go get to work. Okay, so as I mentioned in the introduction, uh, we want to make sure that each of these thrusting positions end with the sword vertical so that we have one blade edge pointing up, one blade edge pointing down, and the tip of the sword pointing forward, piercing our target. Now the palm will face inward um, in most of these techniques and outward on the twist, but the twist is a little bit of an exception. The other thing I want to mention before we get started is if you are left-handed and you're going to hold the jan in your left hand, this is totally fine. I know it may sound a little complicated at first because I'm going to mention everything with my right hand, right hip, right shoulder, but that makes this technique a lot easier to understand with which foot is stepping forward. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to have the jan in my right hand and I'm going to have my sword finger with my left hand. And what we will have is a left foot forward, like a cat stance position, or we'll have our empty stance here. I'm going to bring the sword back to my right hip with the tip pointing forward. Now from this position, this is kind of my neutral starting position. So I'm just in a comfortable balance position, ready to step out if I need to. It's already withdrawn. It's not like an on guard fencing position where I have my jan forward, ready to engage with my opponent. I'm ready to do the thrust. So we're just starting from here for the drill itself. Now I'm going to step forward with my left foot and as the toes come down, I can start shifting forward and then a forward thrust with the right hand. So now I have opposite hand and opposite foot forward. Again, withdraw, step forward, shift forward and poke. Now facing this way, I start from my withdrawn position, step forward, shift forward and poke. Nice and simple. Now, Let's take it to the next thrust. The next thrust is going to have the same foot forward. So last time I had my left foot forward and right hand forward. This time I'm going to have my right foot forward and my right hand forward. Okay. However, let's start from the very beginning here. We'll tie these both together, starting from the hip, left foot forward, shift, poke. Now from here, I'm going to shift back withdraw the sword back to the hip again, pivot my foot out, and then take a big step forward to a bow stance, and then thrust with my right foot forward now and my right hand thrusting forward. Okay, facing this direction, again from our first position, 
left foot forward, right forward thrust. Drop back to the right hip, pivot, right foot forward, right sword thrust. Okay, nice and simple. Now we've had both of our feet forward, the exact same thrust, and we're going to be thrusting at about solar plexus level. So we're not going to be going too high with the sword. We're not going to go too low with the sword. We just want to reach straight out and we're not going to end up shoulder level here. We want to poke to a nice soft spot. Okay. Let's do this one more time and we're going to add our twist. So starting from the sword back on the right hip, left foot forward, thrust to the solar plexus, withdraw, pivot, right foot forward, thrust to the solar plexus. Now from here, we're going to do our twisting stance and our poke back. So what I want to do is withdraw my hand and we're not going to go down to the hip this time. I'm going to bring my palm facing in towards me and then bring it to my shoulder. Okay. Now it's okay to do a little bit of swinging of the sword here. We're just going to set it up next to our shoulder so that our hand is palm pointing in towards us. From this position, we will not deviate the path of the sword. It's just going to poke straight back behind us. And then we're going to turn our palm so that we have our thumb on the top and our fingers underneath, just like every other poke we've done. I'm not going to try to keep it in this position. It's very uncomfortable to poke like that. So again, from here, I bring the sword back, touch the fingers to the wrist. And then now I'm going to pivot my right foot and then I can adjust to turn my shoulder towards the back, my hip towards the back. Notice I raise up a little bit on the toe on the back foot and then I'm going to thrust straight out. Okay, so again from this position to the shoulder, pivot, thrust. Now, like I said in the beginning, when we prepare for this, it's okay to swing the sword a little bit. But after that position, we will no longer deviate from there. The sword will thrust straight out. We do not want to end up swinging to bring the sword or just turning to bring the sword in this position. We're not waving the blade. We want to thrust here. Okay. So it'll have a corkscrew motion as we end up thrusting outward. Okay. So if I'm facing this way from the beginning, sword at my right hip, I step forward, left foot, right hand thrust. Withdraw to the right hip, pivot, right foot forward, right hand thrust. Withdraw the sword to the shoulder, looking back, pivot, twist, and then right hand thrust behind. Okay. One last time, facing this way, we have left foot forward, right hand thrust. Withdraw, right foot forward, right hand thrust. Withdraw to the shoulder, pivot, and thrust. Now we're going to turn back to our original direction. So bring the sword to the hip again. This one we can swing a little bit with the sword. And then we're going to raise up on our left leg and our right hand will thrust forward as we raise our right leg. Okay, so again from that twist position, you have to bring it to the hip shift back to the left foot as you poke out with the right. Now you can do whatever guard position you'd like. The main focus is going to be on the thrust and the footwork. So you can explore different types of guard positions with the sword finger. Let's try it again. I'll face this way, tying the whole thing together, left foot forward, right hand thrust, withdraw to the right hip, right foot forward, right hand thrust, withdraw to the shoulder, twist and thrust, withdraw to the hip, shift back, and then thrust. Now, let's add one more thrust to this, okay? This thrust is going to be with our other leg up, and this will be the only thrust that we're going to change the height of the thrust or the, the target as we poke. We're going to poke down low towards the leg. Okay. So first let's start from the very beginning of the sequence. Left, left foot forward, right hand thrust, 
withdraw. Right foot forward, right hand thrust. Withdraw to the shoulder, twist and poke. Withdraw to the hip, unwind, raise the leg and poke. Now from here, we'll drop to the right hip again, step forward with the right foot, and then we'll poke low to the, to, with our left foot up. Now, notice in this position, my knee is not going to be pointing in the same direction as the blade. This, is, this would be an awkward position. We'll have our knee pointing to the outside, allowing our hip to turn towards the poke itself when we poke down low, okay? Now, if I face this way, putting the whole thing together, left foot forward, right hand thrust. Withdraw, pivot, right foot forward, right hand thrust. Withdraw to the shoulder, pivot, finish the twist, poke behind, withdraw to the hip, shift back, poke straight out as you raise the right leg, withdraw to the hip, step down with the right foot, raise the left leg, and then poke down towards the knee with the right hand. From here, we can turn around and reset and start the entire thing over, okay? One more time, I'll face this way from this direction. Left foot forward, right hand thrust. Withdraw to the hip, pivot, right foot forward, right hand thrust. Withdraw to the shoulder, twist, look behind and poke. Withdraw to the hip, shift back, raise the right leg, poke, withdraw to the right hip, step down with the right foot, raise the left leg and poke low with the right hand. And then from there, turn around. All right, so there you have it. It's a really simple way to practice the thrusting technique. Now, this is not going to cover all of the thrusting techniques that you'll see in Tai Chi Chuan, but you'll have a good idea of how to practice your thrusting technique so you can focus more on the important side of that, and that's accuracy and consistency of movement. Every neutral starting position should lead to a very accurate poke. We don't wanna be swinging the blade around or having a curvy path to our target. We wanna have a straight line to pierce our target every single time the exact same way so we become very efficient at it. And that's the beautiful thing about Tai Chi. Even when you're moving slow, you can start seeing where the blade starts moving off path. So you really have to pay attention and keep focus on what you're doing every single millisecond of the movement. Now, what I would suggest is if you are left-handed, do everything left-handed, just change it over. Left hand, you'll always bring your, to your left hip or your left shoulder, and then you just think of how you're stepping with the feet, opposite foot, same side foot, raising the leg, twisting the leg, it's all going to be the same there. And if you're interested in balancing your art, that's not a bad thing to do either. You can practice with the jian in your right hand, practice with the jian in your left hand, and then you can even start implementing double jian like this and see how you can apply double pokes. One hand could be blocking, or one jian can be blocking one hand, or you can do a double strike at the same time. So there's lots of different ways that you can take this drill and evolve it to match your level and push you to the next level. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. If you're wondering about this particular sword, this is the White Serpent Sword from LK Chen. I absolutely love this for my Tai Chi practice. I'll leave a link in the description down below as well. Um, and otherwise, train hard, and I'll see you guys next time.